And we're live, folks. It is the revealing of the legendary Slick himself, and we've got a lot of cool topics. You want to just kind of say hi to everyone? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Ah, <sighs> Sorry, I actually haven't had a chance to eat dinner yet tonight, so I hope that's... Uh, I hope it's okay with you guys if I just kind of mow on something. Huh? So, what I'd like to do is kick things off with a little bit of Q&A with, uh, with Slick himself. If you guys aren't familiar with our Twitter handles, we're actually only going to be monitoring my Twitter tonight. So, you're going to want to go ahead and ask any questions you have on Twitter. And I am going to take a little break and eat. And Slick is going to do some Q&A. No way to cook it. <laughs> he, oh, that's okay. I don't worry. I got this. I got this. Talk at the camera. Don't talk to me. All right, we're a full minute late with the live stream. How dare you? You know what? We have been, guys. We have gone through hell and back to bring you this live stream because we actually had to shoot another video tonight with um, with with Slick's brother. Actually, you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, my brother and my mom actually. Uh, my mom is hosting a charity called uh, Caregivers Night Out. It's for caregivers of family members and Project. whatnot. It's for caregivers of family members and whatnot that don't get paid for what they're doing. So if, they're, if you're taking care of uh, some sort of family member, you don't get paid for it. It takes up all your time. You don't really get any days to yourself. This is for you. Um, it's more just in our area, so it's more of a local thing. But my brother thought that he'd help fund the event because uh, there's dinner and everything included, and it's all paid for by my family. My brother thought he'd help fund the event by holding an online StarCraft tournament. So it's $5 buy-in, $2.50 goes towards the pot, and $2.50 goes towards the charity. And yeah, it'll be just a fun event for everyone. All right. We have some questions for Slick. We love you, Slick. That's not really a question. Here we go. Okay, we're going to pretend that someone asked Slick that. There you go. Uh, build a computer or look into building a computer. There's tons of different places you can go, OCN. No, he asked how you got started. How did I get started? Uh, I built a computer. <laughs> um, when I got started, NCX wasn't really around. So I researched some parts online. I went on to a couple forums. I don't remember what they were at the time, um, but just a whole bunch of old school computer forums. Asked around for what parts people liked, looked up reviews, uh, performance reviews, whatnot. And Why did you want a computer? Uh, Diablo. Okay. <laughs> At the know. time, I wanted to play Diablo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Diablo was pretty cool. Is that Diablo One? Uh, at the time, that was Diablo Two. My dad had built a computer for Diablo One. Awesome. Okay. What else we got here, guys? You're late, which is getting out of control. Come on, guys! I was like two minutes late. Jeez. You guys are killing me here. We're waiting very patiently for hours. At come on, guys. It says okay here. Just to make this clear, I'm gonna switch to full screen here. Okay. If you go to Twitch, I always say when we will be live again, and wow, that's oh, that's gonna get that's gonna get real confusing real fast. See, we'll be live again at the time, Pacific time, uh, and the date. So if you're ever wondering at what point we are going to be live again on the Twitch channel, you can just check at any time. So so I don't want to hear that you guys waited for hours for the stream because I told you when it was gonna be. All right, let's do some more Twitter here. Go ahead, take it away, Slick. Uh, <laughs> shout out to your mom. Okay, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. What happened to your arm? Okay, I was biking to school, came down a hill, uh, went around a corner, and as I came around the corner, a car came up right up beside me. So we were both going around the corner together. As we got around the corner and I was coming into school, uh, I got pushed into the gutter. This was the first big day of fall, so there's tons of wet leaves everywhere. There's a ramp for people to walk up onto the sidewalk, and I tried to turn up on there. What I couldn't see because of all the leaves that were covering it was that the ramp actually still had a ledge about this much instead of the sidewalks that was about that much. So when I turned to try and go up on it, um, my wheel went completely sideways, and I went head over heels on my bike and landed on the big curb right on my shoulder and then screwed up my hand as well. So that was on Monday. So, so Monday they're probably going to want to know if your arm's broken. My arm is not broken. No bones are broken, no fractures. Um, the muscles in my shoulder are pretty messed up, and there's a big cut. And my fingers are quite cut up, but I can still move them. So, Cool story, bro. Here we go, guys. we got another question for Slick. 
Uh, I've got one brother, no other siblings. He's quite interested in technology. Um, he's got his own water-cooled Cosmos 2. Um, I think you actually tweeted pictures of that, right? I have tweeted pictures of that. Those are pretty early on, but if you go to my Twitter and check out the pictures, they're some of the only pictures I have on there, so you should be able to find it. It's pretty sick. So remember, guys, you can follow Slick on Twitter at SlickPC. See, I made these cool little Twitter tags for this week, which are very high-tech, and I made them in um, Photoshop. Paint. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> All right. So, Slick, why did you decide to show up this time? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. <laughs> I don't really necessarily care about showing myself. It's always been kind of a fun game for people to look for me in reflections. I remember one of my favorite things was uh, closer to when I first started, uh, we had a video where in the background of the TV you could see me really well. So I came with the idea of putting random stuff on my head. We put a... A shoe. Uh, we put a shoe. Um, uh, CPU a water cooler. cooler yeah. yeah. And something else. I, I think know, one a, other. A I think it was a box. Yeah, yeah. it was a box or yeah. something. And that was pretty fun because people got to guess what it was. And I don't know. Some people, you know, it took a while, but then people started actually noticing it, so that was, uh, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. I actually haven't heard of the 570LX, but if it's basically similar to an H100, but with a thicker radiator, then it should just be, yeah, yeah, pretty much like here, say we'll collectively three thumbs up, because no, no, yeah. don't, even <laughs> don't even try, it's, there's no point. <laughs> Okay, we got more questions. Here's here's a good one. No, I don't know. <laughs> kind of simple, but I didn't really think it was that big of a deal. Um, it's it's Linus Tech Tips, so yeah. Here's something. Okay, I've actually received. You guys would be surprised. I've actually received a ton of messages over the year sort of condemning my, uh, my disrespectful treatment of Slick, uh, <laughs> Cameraman, uh, all these various sorts of characters. So, Slick, can you set the record straight once and for all? Were your itty-bitty feelings hurt? No, by... <laughs> no. Uh, banter usually goes back and forth off camera. Um... There's, there was a couple where people were like, I'm unsubscribing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the one I remember was an, I don't remember exactly what board it was. I think it was uh, MSI Z77 GD65. Make sure you're projecting it. Uh, I think it was the MSI Z77 G65A unboxing outside. And I was trying to cover up the sun so that there was a shadow on it so you could see it easier. Right. <laughs> I don't remember what he said, but people got pretty up about it. No, because um, it was kind of, it was kind of homo because you were really close to me. So I was like, I, well, okay. I was like this, and I was unboxing something, and then you <laughs> were like, <laughs> you were like right there, I was like, whoa, you're, you're a little close. It was just, it was one of those things, it was like, I thought you were going to give me a man hug. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, no, 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 off camera banter goes back and forth, so I can totally understand how that might have looked on camera, but it's actually fine. Once it's off camera, I get them back, it's alright. And just so you guys know, like, attached to my left foot, I have like a, a blade that I've been sticking into his calf. <laughs> And if he doesn't say that it's okay, then I was going to, like, stab him, so. Yeah. All right, what else we got? Um, should be fine. Here, hold on, sorry. Should be fine. Try the Windows 7 drivers. They should work. Um, My arm is... More questions about the arm. I mean, okay, geek tweets, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Flip asked it as a good question. So, for the H100i, we actually we actually shot an unboxing tonight. I'm going to go find it, but Slick can probably explain what the difference is. Um, new magnetic mounting hardware is pretty awesome, so that you can easily switch out the hardware for if you want AMD or Intel. The new tubing's great. It's really cool. Um, Make sure you're projecting at the camera. The radiator seems exactly the same. The new fans are awesome, a lot better than what they were before. They're basically uh, Corsair SP fans but they're simplified a bit. No more rubber mounting system, no more tube through there, uh, no more ring. Yeah, no color co color customization. Yeah, that you can pop on and off. Show the magnetic mounting hardware. Yeah, so, see, so this is really cool, guys. So it has 3 8 inch tubing now, which is kind of awesome. Uh, so you can see it's super thick tubing. Okay, you can't see it at all, but super thick tubing compared to what we had before. And instead of those screws that you use to put the mounting hardware on it, you just got a little clip that goes over top. And... Uh, is held in place by a magnet. So you can swap between the Intel and the AMD mounting hardware very, very easily, which is really cool. So, I mean, that's, oh, well, Corsair Link. Yeah, and Corsair Link. And the, the actual water block is very glossy now and looks pretty cool. Yeah, it looks sweet. 
I mean, glossy bothers me when it's a monitor bezel. Yeah, but when you're not really touching it all the time, or it's not really in like direct dust. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sideways, so it should have a hard time settling on there. Should be okay, I think. And positive airflow. But yeah, guys, we'll have an unboxing coming of the H100 very soon. I'm going to upload it sometime tonight after I upload the live stream video. So good question. Very good question. All right. Okay. Jared, what would you recommend for an NMO gaming mouse and an NMO gaming blue backlit keyboard? Well, for one thing, you're not giving us a lot of options with the MMO gaming blue backlit keyboard because you can either try to dig up one of the legendary Logitech G15 Gen 1s. Good luck with that. Because the people who have them are, you know, yeah, yeah not, <laughs> not giving them up. Um, or you could go with something like a Corsair K90, but the K90 has some compatibility issues with some motherboards unless they've received BIOS updates. Um, for a mouse, my personal pick is still the Naga. I've used the G600. I've used the M90. M90 is not bad, but I would, still, I would pick the Naga. What would you go with? Um, I'm not actually a huge fan of the more MMO branded mice and keyboards. Um, okay, but I think we can all agree K90 is better than K60. Yes, I'll actually agree with that. Um, if you if you don't actually use the macro keys on the side of your keyboard, because most people I know that have them don't actually use them. Um, I know more a lot of people that I know that have MMO, like they play a lot of MMOs and they like their MMO gear, use the ones on the mouse, but not the keyboard. So if you use the ones on the mouse, um, I know Rat or Mad Cats is coming out with a new MMO mouse pretty soon. Um, there's K90, there's, uh, there's quite a M90. few. M90. M90, yeah, my bad. M90. Um, Did you try the G600 yet? No. Oh, it just feels a little bit laggy to me. Like it's not... Oh, the Logitech one. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't tried it, but I've heard a lot of reviews about it being laggy. Tons of them. It just, it just doesn't feel quite right. Like even something like, uh, like M60 or M90 or G9, G9X, those mice. Uh, yeah, yeah. G9X like, is awesome. It's like Twitch responsive, but then... I noticed, um, I love Logitech peripherals, but other than their G710 Plus, which recently came out, their more recent stuff I'm not a huge fan of. G710 Plus is kind of outstanding. It's though. pretty great, actually. <laughs> yeah. And for keyboards in general, if you're looking for a blue backlit keyboard, if you want it to be mechanical, check out Ducky or Deck. I know they both do blue backlights. All right, we have 123 new interactions. Oh, boy. Um, Odyssey to LS to a Claro Halo. Do people still buy Claro cards? Claro Halo is uh, an HT Omega card, right? I believe so. I think so. Yeah, Claro Halo is a little bit on the outdated side. I mean, it's still a very good quality card. I'd probably go with something like uh, Zone RST at this point, though, for a more modern, modern solution that you know is going to keep getting driver support because with sound cards, there's that super build quality, which really doesn't change because analog and even DAX to a certain point are not advancing nearly as fast as a lot of stuff. But when it comes to driver support, that's where you can run into issues with an obscure sound card. And if you get the right sound card, you can get swappable op amps and other things. So you can actually change it a bit down the line. Oh yeah, that's true too. Um, personally, I'm not a big fan of the sort of dedicated phys -X card. Modern cards are so fast, it's kind of unnecessary. Um, Ryan, good question. If you're upgrading to Windows 8, here, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to put our, oh, it's not working. Okay, two seconds, guys. Okay, Slick, answer that question, and then I will fix this thing. Um, I personally installed Windows 8 on my laptop, just to more try it out, because it's a develop, my laptop is a permanent development suite for me. Um, I don't see a huge difference. I don't actually use optical drives that often anymore. Uh, I'm thinking about swapping out the optical drive on my laptop, actually, for an additional uh, hard drive or SSD bay, so yeah. Um, I okay. would probably just download it and load it onto a USB. Okay. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Okay, what are you eating, Linus? Oh, I'm having a honey garlic, honey garlic pork, and uh, and rice and broccoli. And okay, I thought the cat was uh, trying to attack the. Oh, here we already covered this one. Awesome. Uh, Minet N600. Oh, okay. Here's a good question. So. Um, What's his name? Gen P. Min Mignoron asks, MyNet N900 or Linksys new AC router. So uh, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Slick talk in a minute here. But first, I want to jump to our 
uh, youtube.com slash NCIXcom. So this is the Welcome channel that NCIX I maintain for NCIX. Episode, Sorry, I'm going to fix that. There we go. So this is the channel I maintain for NCIX. This... Oh, shoot. Sorry, guys. Okay. Sorry. The audio should be fixed now. This is the... See, you guys are probably freaking out about it now. Uh, this is the channel I maintain for NCIX, and we actually just did a video on Western Digital's MyNet family of routers. And what we did is we actually went to Slick's house. See? Here we are in Slick's house. And uh, here, I'm going to go full screen. So I'm going to let you guys watch this segment because it's kind of interesting. On the Western Digital MyNet N900 central router to see if it can handle anything we can throw at it, pretty much. His internet connection is 25 megabit down, 2 megabit up, and we are absolutely hammering it. We have Diablo 3 as well as another game updating right now. We have an FTP download going on this notebook over a while. I'm going to skip a bit here, guys. So basically, here's, uh, here's me and Slick with uh, Netflix running and a Skype call going at the same time while we've got the network super loaded up. In which we, of course, have permission for. We are streaming. Ah, yes, we have one of his other roommates. You can actually see Diesel. Room. Here, check this out. You can see Diesel right here filming behind the camera because that's uh, my end of the Skype call. Two uTorrent clients running on separate PCs, all running off the... All right, so let's get back to, uh, let's get back to business. So, Slick, what was your take? Because we actually tested the EA4500, that's the cloud, cloud router, and the MyNet 900. So we did that, we showed the test with the 900, but take it away. The 4500 was kind of insane, uh, to put it lightly. I, did we, we brought down the firmware, right? Yeah, we are, we're not using the cloud firmware on it. We brought it off cloud firmware because neither of us are Camera neither of us are a fan of cloud firmware. Um, we were running two or three uTorrent connections that were all downloading and uploading. We were downloading and uploading to an FTP. We had a roommate of mine streaming on Twitch. We had just everything we could possibly a Skype call. We had everything we could really think of to hammer the network. And then 4500 just didn't care. Uh, it ran everything perfectly. Things were kind of insane, but everything that we were actually doing actively was running seamlessly. Now, the original intention of the episode was to show like a head-to-head, because -head, um, it was WD who asked us to do, do the episode about their fast track feature, which is QoS that is maintenance-free. You just it's automatic, automatic QoS. Um, so we were like, okay, let's test it against something that doesn't have automatic QoS, and we were expecting to be able to demonstrate like a huge difference in the prioritization. Now the MyNet did prioritize the traffic. The Netflix stream didn't degrade in quality and the Skype call was maintained. But what happened was when we started to throw more stuff at it, um, the, like the game pings when we tried it at the end was about a second on the MyNet, yeah. MyNet router. Playing League of Legends yeah, was Le around a thousand MS. So, so what that meant was that it was, the, the prioritization was working but when we actually put it head to head against the Linksys router, it wasn't necessarily a good demonstration. Let's just put it that way. So, so pretty much the answer to that question, I think, is pretty straightforward. I would probably go with, I, I, okay, I don't think I would actually buy the AC router, though, because there's nothing AC unless you really want it. Uh, but the EA4500 is really great, and I'm expecting that the 6500 would be pretty much more of the same. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> See, this this pretty much that pretty much summarizes the sentiments of anyone with uh, with G15, Gen 1 G15, the best. Gen 2, yeah, you can have it. <laughs> I had an old G15 for a really really long time, and it took me like it took me like sorry, I was looking down because I was depressed. It took me like. <laughs> three months to pick a keyboard when it died because I was just so unhappy when it died. And I love mechanical keyboards, but there's just something about G15, like the original G15s, that was just absolutely amazing. Um, I yeah. still have it upstairs, even though it's completely dead. I just kind of refuse to get rid of it. I don't know. Salim asks, what's a good FPS gaming mouse? Um, I like my G9X. I also like G500s. Uh, like I've already said earlier, I'm a pretty big fan of Logitech peripherals, mainly their mice. Uh, actually, for keyboards, I usually go for more mechanical ones, but I guess they have their 710 Plus now. Yeah. But not in blue switches, so I'd probably... I'll, I'll wait for that. I'll wait for that. Um, but yeah, G9X I really like, G500 I really like. 
The Mionix one is also really good. Yeah, Zybel 60 is what I'm using these days. Well, that's the keyboard. Yeah. It's like their mouse. Did he ask mice? Mouse. Oh, yeah. the Na Naos, uh, Naos, Naos 5000. Yeah. Or 500. Naos 500. Yeah, my wife uses a Naos 3200. She really likes the, uh, the ergonomics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good mouse. Okay, here we go. So two, two quick questions here. Um, won't the H100i magnet interfere with the motherboard or any hardware? No. Universal Scripts asked, what is your opinion on... Shh. Sorry, that's the baby. What is your opinion on Windows 8 strictly as a non-touchscreen OS? And actually, Slick spent more time with Windows 8 than I have so far, so take it away. Uh, I really like the feel of it. Like, when you search for programs and stuff, it flows really well. It, it seems to... It feels very natural. Everything flows as you... I miss Aeroglass. I miss Aeroglass. I actually don't. Um, for a really? little while, I did. But... I don't actually think it's that big of a deal. Because I, I think the reason they took it out, and this is just purely speculation, I think the reason they took it out probably has nothing to do with it no. not being better. Like, I think it's way better. No, it's because it's all generalized. So the tablets and phones would have a problem with it. Um, and you can feel that when you use it, though. That's, that's the pet peeve I have about it. You can tell when you do certain things that this was designed for a tablet, this was designed for a phone, this was designed for a touchscreen. So there's usually at least one more step to everything. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you go to shut your computer down, and like I'm moving from class to class, so I want to shut down really quickly. Um, when there's one extra step, it's just tedious and annoying. And okay. Like, as you Riddle me this. Why do you need to shut down? Because it wakes and sleeps so fast. But if you ever do need to shut down, like for whatever reason, if you wake and sleep, it's the same thing. I've had some problems closing my tablet or my laptop and moving from class to class, but that's more to do with the fact that I had a pre-release version of Windows 8 that I don't think had full functionality yet. So that's probably it. But back then, I was constantly shutting down and going from class to class. But no matter what you do, there's usually one more step. Or say, if you want to open another notepad. So if you already have a notepad open, uh, press start, type notepad, press enter. It will just bring the notepad that you already have open forward on screen instead of actually opening a new notepad, like it did in all previous versions of Windows. So instead, you have to either go down and middle click on it with your uh, mouse wheel, or right click and create a new instance, which is just, I liked the old way. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of it as a non-touchscreen desktop OS, but yeah. But you'll stubbornly use it? I will stubbornly use it. I will give it time. I'm excited for Service Pack 1. Right. I mean, there's a couple little things that I'm kind of looking at going, well, if they just fix this, then it would be a billion times better, like the search. Uh, search right now, you click search, and then, or you, you click the start menu, and then you type in something. And if you don't have the right type of thing that you're searching for selected, it won't find anything. So if you're looking for a setting like device manager yeah. um, or whatever, you have to go under settings, and its default is apps. So it, it's just annoying. You should just be able to type it and press enter, but you have to type it and click on the thing, and then, yeah. Yeah, so on the other hand, Surface RT is amazing. Surface RT is amazing. There is other really cool things about yeah. Windows 8 too. Um, file transfers are awesome. I know. They're amazingly no. awesome. Remember when we were trying to do those benchmarks with the A-Data drive oh on the God. Windows 7 machine yeah. and it was like just completely derping out? I tried it on a Windows 8 machine. It was like so easy. I get a useful readable benchmark i mean i'm using i'm using windows 8 for any kind of file transfer or any kind of like storage benchmarks from now on that's that's just it I'm yeah no absolutely great shows you a perfect graphical yep. map of how it's transferring yep and they're pausable which is amazing i absolutely love that i use that constantly yeah um all of that is just great the new task manager is awesome i love task manager and it even <laughs> works on like the rt tablets yeah, and stuff yeah. which is like, kind of cool it's great like there is really really good things about it but there's also things that I'm not a huge fan of. And they could fix that in further service packs or whatever. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's move into one of our discussion topics. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about this already or if you haven't heard about this already. But if you haven't, then motherboards.org, the channel. You just go motherboards or, you know, the one with, uh, with Elric is no longer the motherboards.org channel with Elric. So if you guys haven't seen this already, check this out. In the last couple days, here, we'll go on uh, Social Blade. Yeah, this will probably be interesting. Yeah, this will this will probably be interesting. So Elric left motherboards.org, published a video on his other channel, Tech Tomorrow, or Tomorrow Tech? I think it's Tech Tomorrow. I think it might be Tomorrow Tech. Okay, it's one of the two. Um, telling his subscribers to unsubscribe because his channel had been taken 
from him. So in the last couple days, uh, yeah, it helps if I type the thing right. In the last couple days, he has shed thousands of subscribers. So, my Lord Zorg. There we go. Okay, I got this, I got this. So check that out, guys. In the past couple days, he has lost about 13,000 subscribers from the Motherboard's org channel, which basically is, um, I mean, what are, what, are they even gonna, what are they even gonna do with it? Like, realistically, think about this, guys. What if I was, like, fired from NCIX, then, I don't know, Slick, would you do Linus Tech Tips? Uh, probably not. <laughs> Okay, so there, hold on. Okay, a couple things, guys. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of people in the Twitch chat, and I'm here. I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to let you Twitch chat guys talk for a little bit here. There's a lot of people in the Twitch chat that are, um, that are saying, you know, oh, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. He wasn't, he wasn't that great anyway, blah, blah, blah. It's not the, it's not really the point. The point is it's very difficult to recast someone who is sort of the, the face. And I'm not saying who was right and who was wrong, because I have no idea. But... I mean, would you watch, uh, for example, actually, okay, what, what other channels do you even follow? Okay, Time to Live Customs. Yeah. Would you watch it without Tiny Tom Logan? No. Um, the only other guy I really watch is Tiny Tom Logan, and the only reason why I watch him is if he goes so into depth with things, so that I can't actually just get this from reading a little blurb. Um, and without him, that channel's dead. If he lost, if he left for some reason, it's his thing, so he can't really be fired. But if well, he yeah, left for that's... some reason, I would see no reason to watch any more videos. Uh, the whole thing is branded on a person. It, like, uh, what was that TV show where the guy got fired because he smoked too much crack? What? Um, oh, uh, Charlie Sheen. Yeah. When he left, like, does anyone actually watch that show anymore? I know, right? Ashton as, Kutcher? Yeah. As like... far as I've heard, it just, no one cares. And, like, Ashton Kutcher, Kutcher is apparently a good actor, but... Like, no one cares. The, the whole idea of the show is gone. Right. I don't know. Okay, so that was something that we said we were going to talk about. I want to talk about another thing. So, everyone knows what this is. And this, of course, looks like the same thing, which is, of course, a reason that uh, Apple should get a lot of money. Oh, um, cool. So, it's official. The Galaxy S3 is the top-sellingest smartphone ever, or something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. What's that mean? I don't know. <laughs> here's my okay. Here's my here's my problem, and I'm not I'm not an Apple fanboy, at all. But here here's here's the thing. S three they spend on the hardware. That much is that much is clear. So they design this phone. Maybe they take a lower margin on it at the beginning, and they go, okay, we're gonna put like a huge screen in it, and we're gonna like um, put like a super fast processor in it or whatever else. But would you would you argue that the build quality is better than an iPhone 4 or an iPhone 5? Uh, not necessarily. They're both really high build quality phones. It's made of plastic. So? What do you mean so? What What's your favorite What's your favorite backing on Samsung monitors? Brushed aluminum or fake fake brushed aluminum? Okay, but we're not talking about that. We're talking <laughs> We're talking about a phone. It's really durable. I've dropped it a couple times already. Can you tell? Probably if I look closely enough. I don't think so. Wow, actually, okay, 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 fine. It's actually really di like there's differences between plastic. You know that. It's okay, good fine. Plastic. Forget phone then. Let's let's move. Let's let's look at like notebooks then. Okay, notebooks. Apple spends on the build quality of their notebooks. This is true. I'm questionable. Yeah. I mean, I had an HP Elite book for a while there that I was just kind of tinkering around with. I was going, wow, this is built really well for a PC. And then I kind of looked at it. and I went, yeah, but it's priced like a Mac. So I would make, I guess I would make the argument that even if you're not getting sort of the, the hardware spec or even if you're not getting whatever else, I think there's an inherent value to build quality. And yes, but this has build quality. <sighs> I, I, this is a, I've dropped it quite okay, a few times. Okay, fine. I've cement a couple times. I'm okay, not what, proud of that, but it has. What about the fact that Apple's phone is so much faster now? Uh, I have never had a single problem with speed with this phone. I know, but I've never had a single problem with speed for my iPhone 4. So but that... does it matter? Uh... <laughs> I can play a game and watch a video at the same time and neither of them lag. I think that's good enough. 
That's good enough for you. So basically, phones are as fast as... Okay, there you go. Slick's tech tip of the no, day. No, I disagree. Slick, phones are as fast as they ever need to be. And I'm no saying one, it's not slow. I'm not saying it's as fast as it needs to be. No one will ever need more than 512 kilobytes this of RAM. This phone has LTE. Okay. Are you running LTE? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, fine. Let me put it this way. Okay, let's move on to tablets then. Okay, Okay, anyway. tablets. <laughs> I would argue that iPad absolutely smokes everything else. Yeah. Um, I do like the... Okay, Surface I like. Yeah, I was just going to say, I okay. do really like the Surface, let's, although... Let's go back to Am Android then. Okay, I can't, I, I'm, not, I'm not willing to fight for Android in the tablet, tablet market. They just don't have it right now. I mean, okay. I, mean, I, I, will, I will stand behind them with phones. I like their phones. I don't like the usability experience of an iPhone. Okay. Um, I would argue that it's excellent. But, but not for me. Have you ever used one? Yes, I have. Did you ever actually use one day to day? I have. iPhone 3G. My mom has it right now. She uses it as an iPod. <laughs> I don't like it. There's, it's, it's, you have to sign into the App Store every single freaking time. I'm signing into my phone. I just want to use my phone. The only argument I've heard that that is actually viable is so that your kid can't go on their phone and buy a million different things. There's parental controls in here. You can turn on parental controls and make it so that you just can't buy things. Okay, I, I okay, okay. Let, let's to go add. back to the battle I can win then. Let's go back to tablets. Tablets? Okay. So I've, iPad 4. There's a lot of sort of, there's a lot of, there's, people are talking a lot of smack about how iPad 4 is just an iPad 3 with a faster processor. Yeah. Um, okay, but it doesn't cost more. Yeah, and, and it's not like that's any different from what they've usually done. They, does it ever cost more? I thought they always released them at the same price point. No, it always comes at the same price point. The one thing we saw last time, though, was they kept the iPad 2 around, but at a lower price point as sort of like a... So, so with iPad mini, there's like a good, better, best kind of right. placement strategy here. So with A6X, which I think is the chip in the iPad 4, which they're not calling iPad 4, it's the new iPad again, like six or seven months <laughs> after the last new iPad, there's ba they're basically two generations ahead of anything else in terms of performance. Why? Uh, they're, they're ARM processors. Uh, I was talking to a friend at school, Theo, if you're out there, hello. Um, I don't know if this is true. This is something I heard from a friend at school, so don't quote me, but he's pretty credible, so I think so. And he was saying that Apple is, they haven't made an official statement or anything, but they're seriously considering going with ARM processors for everything. Really? Ditching Intel. And I think that might give Intel a little bit of a wake-up call for the tablet market. And I certainly hope so. Yeah, because Surface is amazing, and I can't really fight for any Android tablets, although I'd like to, but I just can't. But again, the same thing holding back Surface is holding back Android tablets in a big way, and it's Tegra 3. I yeah, mean, yeah. I, Tegra 3 was good when it came out. It was good. Yeah. But even then, it wasn't as fast as iPad 2. Yeah. iPad 3 was faster iPad 4 is faster again. It's a two generational gap and it already wasn't that competitive. So why is it that Nvidia can't afford to make a faster chip or Samsung can't afford to, I mean, even Galaxy Note 10.1 has a faster chip in it than a Tegra 3, but using it did not feel like anything like using an iPad. Um, I think Nvidia is more going for the value market right now. Um, I know it's kind of weird because NVIDIA usually goes big or goes home, but... Um, but they trumpet the performance of Tegra from the rooftops. Yeah, I know. Um, and they really need to get their game up because they are getting destroyed by ARM. And so does Intel. Intel needs to wake up and actually care about tablets and start destroying ARM because Intel has the power to do it. NVIDIA is awesome, but I think they're still, even though they say they're kind of focusing on tablets, I think they're still focusing on the desktop realm. Um, trying to make things cheaper. Well, that and enterprise. And enterprise and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I think that's what Intel is doing too. They care more about desktops. They care more about servers. Um, Here's the thing that kills me about what Intel's been doing lately. And it comes down to die size. Intel chips, now that... Okay, okay. You look at... sort of Think about this. So the pricing of AMD CPUs versus Intel CPUs. AMD has a four-module pile driver chip, the yep. 8350 that has an enormous die. Like we're talking a die that is at least, I, I can't remember the exact measurements, but it's more than double the size of an Intel 3770K. Huge die size compared to that. So when it comes to how much a CPU costs or how much any chip costs, like this chip, you know, this chip, doesn't matter what chip, it comes down to the manufacturing process. Yeah. So the R&D that went into it. 
and then it comes down to the die size because the die size is the odds that a defect will appear on that part of the wafer. So the wafer is about this big and then you can put as many chips as you can and the bigger the die size, any wafer is going to have defects, especially around the outsides. The bigger the die size, the bigger the chance there's a significant defect on it and it can't be used. So Intel, if you watch, they've been shrinking their manufacturing process. They haven't been giving us any kind of, uh, they, they've been shrinking the die size that's dedicated to the actual CPU for the last few generations. So what could they do if they were actually paying attention, if AMD was actually giving them a run for their money? And this ties back into my point about Apple as well. Uh, they could use their real estate more and just blow them out of the water. Isn't it um, 2011, didn't they like burn off two of the cores? Uh, yeah, yeah, 2011. Well, the, the server chips are, are up to eight cores. Yeah, yeah. And then the Extreme Edition, which is supposed to be, the, even the new Extreme Edition, 3970X, which is supposed to be like 150 watt TDP. So in theory, they didn't even care yeah. about TDP. Yeah. But all we got out of it was a couple hundred more megahertz. And they did not leave in the other two cores. And I'm, I mean, Ivy, uh, Sandy Bridge E, Ivy Bridge E, Ivy Bridge E, which is coming, I think is supposed to be up to 12 cores. But whenever it comes, it'll come and that'll be that. I think um, I used to be a pretty big fan of AMD back with their Athlon 64 and Athlon 64X2. Yeah, you're a fair weather friend is basically what you're trying to say, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, but AMD just hasn't been competing properly lately. Intel's just been absolutely destroying, and because AMD isn't actually giving Intel a run for their money, um, Intel doesn't have to care. Right, they can just keep on making things cheaper and cheaper so that their profit margins are higher, yep. and it just they just don't have to care. On the other hand, what do they have to do? Because they're a publicly traded company, publicly traded companies are always evaluated based on growth. They have to make money, yeah. Yeah, so they have to make money, they have to show growth. If they're not increasing profit margins or increasing revenues or doing both, then they're going to get destroyed. So the PC, desktop PC market is pretty saturated, and I've got my own opinions about why that is. I don't think it has anything to do with the desktop being dead as a platform. I think it's, I mean, how old is your parents? Okay, you're probably a bad example, but your friends, how old are their parents' computers? Oh, really old. My parents' computer. My my friends' parents' computers are really old. Five years, probably around there. Three years. X, four XP years machines. Five. They're just they're all XP machines. All my friends' parents' computers are XP machines, or they're my friends' old computers, which are now running right. Windows Seven. So it's hard to sell CPUs if you're not buying. If people aren't buying computers, but yeah. that doesn't mean they're not still using desktops. So we can yeah. put that aside forever. The desktop is not dead. But if you're Intel, what choice do you have now? You have to increase your margins. Um, or you have to try and find a way to sell more stuff, or you have to expand into new markets. I mean, I think SSD is going to be a big deal. Yeah. Um, you look at what's going on with OCZ right now. You look at what's going on with anyone who's not a manufacturer. Yeah. And uh, guys like Samsung, guys like Intel, where they have fabs, they have the technology, the vertical guys, those are, those are going to be the guys who win. Yeah. Um, where are we going with this? They will... I'm not actually entirely sure, but like Intel can make their own uh, modules and cherry pick them too. So it's not really fair for all the guys that aren't manufacturing their own. No, that's true. Intel and Samsung just cherry pick their own stuff. Right. Okay. So back to RE8, my geez, back to sorry. my Apple thing. So here's my theory as to why Apple can be two generations ahead of everyone else in terms of performance. They spend on die size. You look at the size of something like an A6X compared to a Tegra 3. It is huge. It absolutely dwarfs Tegra 3. It's not rocket science. I mean, a processor is how many transistors are in it, basically. And then the advantage of a smaller manufacturing process is basically the, the whole point is being able to stuff more transistors into that space because you reach a point of diminishing returns. When it gets this big, the delay to get a signal from here to here across the chip and sort of all the traces in between becomes too much. So as long as you stay within a certain size, then it's all good. But if you look back at like older, remember when CPUs didn't have a heat spreader on them, how big the cores were, how big, they're so much smaller now. Whereas Apple is interesting because Nvidia doesn't get to take money from the manufacturing, but neither does Apple. They don't get to take money from the screen. They don't get to take money from the app store. They don't get to take money from the, the button, anything else. Apple gets to take margin on almost every aspect of this device. And, and Apple can make money on other things too, like cables and cases and whatnot. Yes, accessories. So what happens 
I, I believe the reason that they can be so far ahead is they can just spend on die size. They can go, okay, we don't care. Make the chip as big as you want. Whereas Nvidia only gets to sell a chip. So they have to optimize, you know, like think about the margins you need if you're a chip maker. So that, that Tegra device that you have, um, I don't have any handy right now, but that Tegra device you have, Nvidia only got to take a profit on that one little thing. So if they were to take like, uh, what's Apple's gross margins? 40, 45% or something like that? There, yeah. It's around that. So if Apple gets to take 45% on a phone, then Nvidia, if Nvidia only gets to take 45% on a phone, that means Apple's taking a couple hundred dollars or on a chip rather for Nvidia. And Nvidia, if that chip has to be part of a phone that costs $500 and they're getting 45% of whatever that is, they're only getting to take a few bucks, so they have to have much higher profit margins. So that's my theory. I don't think anyone can catch up, unless it's maybe Samsung. I think Samsung could catch up, Intel could catch up. Full solution providers, yeah. I, I wish, I don't know. I hope, I hope Tegra doesn't die. I like kind of like Nvidia, and I like where they're going with it. They're trying really hard. They're pushing for the gaming side of it and stuff, but it's just not there. Well, Wayne's going to be significantly faster than the current generation product. I mean, yeah. the uh, the roadmap that I saw at the last uh, NVIDIA partner conference basically had performance going like this. I think they were saying by 2014 or 2015, we were going to have core i5 level performance in a Tegra product. Um, I mean, I, they're very much in the game. And as a solutions provider, I think they'll, they'll always be a big winner. Yeah. I mean, AMD is finally turning things on with, uh, hey, what, have you seen the, the new AMD drivers? I actually have not. Never settle drivers are adding 10 to 15% across the board on 7,000 series cards in AAA titles. Their, their cards haven't really been a problem, though. No. Nah, their yeah. graphics cards have been really good. It's other areas that they've been failing in. Lately. Right. Okay, let's do some Twitter Q&A for a while, guys. Let's see if we got some good questions on the Twitters. I'm going to go ahead and switch to my Twitter window here so you guys can actually see what's going on. All right, back up to the top, and we have 321 new interactions. Yay! Linus and Slick, 7950 versus 660 Ti. And Slick, before you answer that question, I would like you to remember that 7950 now has 10 to 15 better, 10 to 15 percent better performance across the board compared to when you last benchmarked them. Right. That probably means that in raw performance, the 7950 will win. Um, okay. I like over if you get a 660 Ti Power Edition. No, not anymore. They revised it. And Nvidia had them pull it back. Seriously? Yeah. That's pretty good. So now 7950 smokes 660 Ti and overclocking. Yeah, that's that's lame. I, I I really, really, really I called them out at PAX. I really, really, really don't like what Nvidia is doing with their overvolting stuff. And when I asked them, um I actually got one of my buddies to ask him. He was on here actually, Harrison. I got him to ask him. Um when he when Harrison asked them, they said specifically, oh, we're not doing anything, we're not doing anything, that's up to the board partners. But if the board partners do anything about it, like what MSI did, I'm guessing like NVIDIA pulls all warranty. Yep. So they can't afford that. That's where NVIDIA used to stand behind them, but now they don't stand behind them, so they are doing something about okay, it. Okay, the flip side of that is if I manufacture this CPU cooler and I say you're not allowed to run the pump at 14 volts or 15 volts or 20 volts or wherever the limit is, but don't you I have the right to say no warranty? Yes, and that's true, but NVIDIA has always covered this and now they have pulled it back. That's all taking away an advantage of your product. Right. Um, if, you, if you run a company for 20 years, I'm just pulling random numbers, um, 20 years and you've always had one big strong thing that everyone really likes you for, and then you take it away, you can't expect people to just be like, oh yeah, that totally makes sense. People are going to be upset. It's annoying. Um, and like... Putting people in weird situations like MSI where they have to backpedal from their overvolt thing. Right. Where that was so cool. The 660 Ti Power Edition was epic. I loved that card. And now... So basically, it's a business decision at the end of the day. It comes back to that... You know what? It comes back to that whole like die size and margins and shrinking business. Because graphics as... as a, I mean, everyone wants to talk about PC gaming isn't dying. PC gaming is not dying. League of Legends, most played game in history. Right. Here's the problem, though is that League of Legends does not help sell graphics cards. That's true. That is true. <laughs> High-end PC gaming has been a very sad thing for a very long time. Um, Crisis 3, I'm hoping, starts to turn this around. They've, I've heard that it will. 
I've heard that it will. Uh, Yuri, whatever his name is, has basically said, you know what? Screw your graphics card and your memory and your CPU. I'm going to crush it all. So great. I think that's great for PC gaming. Um, Star Citizen using CryEngine 3. Yep. Looks really exciting. Space Sim game. So I'm hoping it all turns around. But when, when, when guys pitch those sort of PC gaming is growing numbers, they're talking WoW. They're talking League of Legends. Uh, WoW is going down, actually. Okay, whatever. They're talking about mainstream stuff. Peggle. <laughs> These are technically PC games. These are technically PC gamers, but they're not buying GTX 680s. No. So at the end of the day, NVIDIA, again, is a public company. What do they have to do? They have to reduce their RMAs. They have to find other ways to tighten up their business. They have to take smaller dies. 680 is a smaller die size than, I think, at least three or four generations back of high-end cards. One thing, too, though, like... Uh... NVIDIA's always had their It's in the Game campaign, mm -hmm. but they used to be way more aggressive about it. And stuff like Borderlands, where they made it kind of cheesy, where it's just, it detects what kind of graphics card you have and literally takes things out of the game if you have an ATI card. Have you seen that? Yeah. I showed you that? Okay. Um, it's pretty brutal. Like, they'll take out water pipes that shoot water out. ATI cards can create water. I'm sure that's not a big deal. Um, but they just removed it from the game. Like, if they changed their push with that and made it so that NVIDIA-sponsored games were just intense and had awesome graphics hardware and really, really, really good resolutions and just But they awesome can't do graphics. it because of consoles. And by the sound of things, Wii U isn't going to turn it all around. No, not exactly. But, like, there is games coming out. Look at Kickstarter. There's so many games coming out that are just PC. Right. So do it for the games that are just PC. Why would NVIDIA sponsor a game that's coming out on a console? Kickstarter is kind of the best thing to happen to the PC gaming industry, like, ever. It's actually been kind of amazing. Because the whole problem with PC gaming, and you guys can argue about it till you're blue in the face, the problem with PC gaming has been piracy. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's the most pirated platform. So yep. if you're going to produce a game for one platform, it's not going to be PC. Period. Um, on the other hand, Kickstarter takes all the risk away from the developer. Although I would argue that the... Well, yeah, because they get the money up front. They know yeah, at least their cost is covered. So if anyone buys the game, then it will be profitable. It's, it's already profitable in a lot of situations because they're selling the game. In, a lot of, in almost right. every, single, every single Kickstarter situation, um, you're buying it. Or if you're going below the buying price, which okay. most people don't do. Don't tell my wife. I don't know if she can hear us, but I'm actually thinking about buying the $250 Star Citizen package. Oh, my goodness. It comes, no, it comes with the baller ship. Well... <laughs> For, if you do, one of my friends for my birthday bought me the Star Citizen package. Which not, one? not the two. I think it's the one that just gets you the game. Just the game? Yeah. Okay. And I, I get a ship, but it's not like the most amazing thing. Um, so basically, I get to blow you up right when the game comes out in from, Alpha? Yeah. <laughs> I nice. don't think I get Alpha either. I get really? Beta. I think I get Beta. Oh, you don't get Alpha? Oh. I don't think so. So basically, by the time you get Beta, I'll be an yeah, expert, be and my ship will be Ownage, and ha. I wonder if you get to carry that onwards. Anyways. Um, yeah, I get to carry it on. Oh, I don't, actually, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. A lot okay. of them don't let you. Um, so anyway, you, sorry, you were saying Kickstarters include the game. I'm trying to remember where I was going with that. Yeah, so a lot of their sales are already done. Right. That's the thing. And they have to calculate, calculate that in. Like, yes, this budget gets to go towards the development of the game, but that budget also has to go towards paying everyone because... A huge portion, most of their sales are done before the game is released. Right. Which is kind of a really interesting platform. Kind of scary. Really scary for a lot of people, well, but... No! They're also hitting like 300% of their margins in a lot of situations. Project Eternity was insane. Project Eternity wanted like... I don't remember the numbers, I'm sorry, but I think they wanted like $800,000 and they ended up getting almost $4 million. Wow, okay. Uh... Can, okay, here's know. the risk then, because... Sort of, okay, so your point, that most of the sales are probably done before the game even launches, I would counter that and I would say many customers will be very uncertain unless it's an extremely reputable developer about giving money to a developer. Basically, there's no way to get Kickstarter money back. No. So um, if, if it doesn't hit their... Anyways, yeah, keep going. Well, no, if the project goes ahead, they yeah, say, thank yeah. you for the money. It's a Kickstarter. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a seed fund. You don't get it yeah, back if the yeah. project sucks or the game isn't very good. So you're paying 40 bucks for the game. That's, that's the cost of a game on Steam or whatever, discounted game. Um, what if it turns into a Duke Nukem Forever type of fiasco? Where um, 13 years later, you paid $40 for this game. Did, speaking of, did you see the Google image of the guy who had his original pre-order? Yeah, yeah. yeah, anyway. From, it was like all decrepit. And but horrible. that's the situation that we could potentially be creating. So I think lots of people will hold out until the game's done. 
Yeah, and they can do that. One thing you're doing is like, uh, if any of you guys follow the Project Eternity one, Obsidian made some of the most iconic games that have ever been released, but lately haven't been doing that amazing. Uh, they have publicly blamed this previously on the people that have been funding them. They push the project dates, they push the project dates, then the game is released. Uncomplete. Brink. Think about Brink for a second. Brink was like one of the biggest disappointments of a game that I've ever released. I was so excited for Brink and then it was so terrible. Because it was so obviously unfinished. Um, it was not polished. The single player was multiplayer with bots. That was literally like, you click on single player and you might, like, it's the exact same map that's in multiplayer. You do the exact same thing, except there's bots on your team and bots on the other team. Like, that's not a single player. There's random cinematics as you're running through. It's like, oh, cinematic randomly. Like, I don't care. This means nothing. It was just horribly unpolished and incomplete. And if you get your budget from fans, and you can set it whatever date you want as well. You have to set a yeah, date. Yeah, within reason. Within reason, right. because you have to set a date. Dick to confirm. <laughs> <laughs> your fans have to accept that date when they're paying for it. So right. they have to know it has to be reasonable. But you can have these allowances that you've never really had before. You right. can develop things that you weren't able to before because people ask for it. Okay, let's go back and do. Let's do some quick Twitter questions. So Couch Sloth says he likes the show format of the show tonight. Glad to hear it. You know what? Viewership is actually better than it's been since I think the first show that I did. So people were either tuning in because they're super excited to meet the legendary Slick himself without a bag on his head. <laughs> hey, maybe I'll wear the bag for a bit. So people yeah, were either around, super excited around. about that or uh, <laughs> or or they really are enjoying the, okay, I can't read the screen. But, um, okay, I'm enjoying the format of the show, something, something. Are the main things I should look for? What are the main things to look for for a monitor for gaming and video editing? Well, those are two completely different things. You want a gaming monitor, you want a 120 hertz panel. You want video editing, you need an IPS panel or PLS panel. So, opposite. You got to figure out which one's more important to you. Is my secondary laptop fast enough to run Crisis 2? No. Maybe Slick wants food. Slick already ate. Yeah. What did you have tonight, Slick? I had a... I had a Whopper and I had their fish burger thing because on Fridays Burger King has two dollar fish burgers. Never had one before. It honestly wasn't that bad. Yay, hey, Burger King! By the way, Burger King is a proud sponsor of the Lyman <laughs> Tips live stream tonight. They fed me, although I had to pay for it. Oh well. That's sort of sponsorship. Yeah, I guess. Um, you have to pay. Uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, okay, so question from Da Don. Oh, no, I was eating that. Oh, do you want some? Okay. My wife's stealing my pomegranate. Um, so Tiger, Tiger 3 isn't cutting it. What are your thoughts on Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 quad-core chips? I mean, that's the thing is these mobile chips are getting so much faster so quickly that it's really exciting. But my whole argument was just that Apple will always be able to be ahead of the curve because Qualcomm only gets to take money for the chip. Just the same way Nvidia only gets to take money for the chip or anyone else, even ARM to a lesser extent only gets to take money for the chip, and Apple gets to take money for the entire solution. AMD will be up for sale next year, most probably. You know what, we can't speculate on that. Nope, we're not speculating on that. You looked like you were about to say no, something. No, I wasn't. I was just like, eh. Well, because if they do, anyways. Glad to hear you guys like the format of the show. Uh, thoughts on the Black Widow Ultimate 2013? Um, if they have their new... Uh, what is it called? Synopsis drivers? Synapse. Synapse drivers? I am not a fan if they have those. So Synapse drivers, basically, for you guys who don't know, Razer's Synapse software allows you to save, like, let's say this was a mouse. You know what? Let's say this was a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> let's say this is a mouse. <laughs> um, so it allows you to save to the cloud all of the DPI settings, all the macro settings, all the settings that you would have had for this mouse. Do you know you can even save the adjustable weight settings in the bottom of the mouse? Uh, what? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that makes no sense. But you save it in the cloud, so if you take that mouse and plug it into any computer, log into Synapse, it will know all of your settings, no big deal, and it can even save game pro per game profiles, yeah. which is very cool as well. Why don't gamers like this? Because if you lose your internet connection for any reason, you lose all of your settings because they save it in the cloud. If they had it so, like, uh, okay, I really don't like Origin, but this is actually something to do well. They have cloud storage for save, fi save files. So Battlefield 3, if I don't have my Battlefield 3 save file, that's fine. I can play the game. But if right. 
And this I... is what irks me about Steam, too. Are they implementing that yet? I believe so. Every game should just have cloud save files. It's ridiculous that they yeah. don't. Anyway, go ahead. Um, I don't. I know they do for settings. I don't know if they do for save files. I don't think they do. I don't yet. think so either. Because it's so many different developers. Like, it might be yeah. supported on Valve games, but yeah, that would be amazing. Well, most Valve games don't have single player. Except for Half Life. Anyways. Um, okay, when are we getting episode three? <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> I really want to know, but yeah. Um, so, like. With Origins thing, if you are activated to the internet, it'll take that opportunity and download the save file for you. It'll ask you first. It's like, do you want to sync up? Blah, 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 blah. Yep. If you say yes, it downloads it. That's awesome. If you have it in your offline, that's awesome. That doesn't really matter. With Razer's new setup, the second you lose internet connection, you lose all of your settings. So all of a sudden you have like a $10 mouse instead of this beast mode level of expensive mouse that you bought. And it just, I don't know. So you're saying that's a problem. That's uh, yes. <laughs> that's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should computers be switched off or left on? Uh, put it in sleep. Um, Apple has iTunes, Android has Google Play, most of that, okay. Oh, that's an interesting take on this. So we have a lot of international viewers on our live streams. Here's a complaint that a lot of the features built for Android are exclusive to the US. I mean, Google Maps isn't. Um, I'd love for you guys to sort of pitch in on Twitter or on the... T Actually, you know what? I'm going to give this one to the Twitch chat, guys. He probably means North America. I've never had a single... North America. Before. Okay, yeah, because guys, we're in Canada. Um, yeah. So, have you guys run into any issues with Google applications not working outside of North America? And this is only for the non-North American viewers. So we're going to the Twitch chat. There we go. We're going to cover up Slick for a change. No one wants to see him anyway. <laughs> um, Android is insanely popular in like India. Google Music? Places. Google is fine. Wow, it's going really fast. It's hard to read. Maybe we should turn on slow mode? Okay, apparently New Zealand is fine. China apparently recently banned some of the... Uh... Well, that's China. That doesn't count. China doesn't count? It's China like a count. sixth of the population but of the world. But that's China banning it. That's not... It just straight up not working. Puerto Rico is apparently fine. Google Maps was apparently broken in the UK, but then Surrey only half works there too. Okay. Mm. Australia has stupid maps. Yeah, okay. But then again, like, Apple's maps are stupid everywhere as yeah. far as I can tell. Yeah. Dominican Republic apparently fine. Singapore Malaysia's okay. Malaysia's fine. Okay. Mexico doesn't have Google Music, so... The only real complaint so far seems to be about, like, Google Music more than right. anything else, so. Okay. What else we got here on Twitter? We just heard, tore apart an app on 64. It's cool. That's very sad, because that was, like, the last thing they made that was awesome. Yeah, they've been talking about this for a while, actually, de-emphasizing desktop. And, yeah. and they probably should, because they're just losing. I wonder what's going to happen with Intel, though, because wouldn't that make them a monopoly? Um... Yeah, potentially. On the other hand, are they a monopoly if ARM continues along the path that they're going? Right, that's a good point. If, yeah, because they'll be developing for desktop. Yeah, and if, if Windows RT gets the kind of support that I personally hope it gets, then there will be le real, legitimate desktop applications that will run on ARM. Yeah, yeah. And Windows, I mean, my hope, my personal hope, just to see more competition, is that by the time we see Windows 9, Windows 10, it's actually a unified SKU. If yep. there is a way to do it, if there is a way to do it, or it's like it's a single image, and then it either installs an ARM version or it installs an x86 version, and... And honestly, to, soon enough, it'll be fast enough. And I don't think it'll right. matter. That's yeah. right. Soon enough, it'll be fast enough, and applications will continue to get more threaded, yep. so ARM can just throw more cores at the problem, which they're very good at. Yep. And to the user, it should be completely transparent, where you just download something, I think... In much the same way that you still see like iTunes. You still have x86, x64 versions. Yep. ARM version. Done. I, I'm, I'd be very excited. I'd be very excited to see something like that. Yep. Uh, Windows 8, Black Friday, or Cyber Monday sales? Very unlikely. It's already really cheap. What's your take on Disney buying Star Wars? This. This is a fantastic topic for discussion because I think it's fantastic. You know what? I'm going to let Slick give you guys his opinion. I actually don't care about his opinion. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, I'm surprised you worded it like that, because I kind of agree. Well, give your opinion about how you agree with me, because All right, that's, well, that's a pretty safe opinion to have, because I'm pretty clever. 
Um, look what they did with the Marvel heroes. Disney owns Marvel. Uh, I've literally never heard of a single person ever complain about Avengers. I've never heard of a single person ever complain about Iron Man. The only one of the new superhero movies that I've actually heard anyone complain about is Thor. But then they have to follow a certain storyline. And I think for following that storyline, they actually did a really good job with that movie. If they stay true to Star Wars, if they stay true to the older Star Wars movies, they will do fine, in my opinion. And if they go like way into the future, if they don't try and just go like hug the storyline, if they jump way in the future and make it actually make sense, I think they'll do a really good job. Disney's a really good company. They make really, really good movies. I think everything will be just completely fine. I'm sure they'll spend the money to cast it right. They seem to spend the money to cast everything right. Disney's huge. Um, I don't think there'll be a casting problem. I don't think there'll be a budget problem. Yeah, I think it'll be great. Yeah, Hopefully, if, anything, if there's anything that Mickey Mouse has, it's plenty of money. Yeah, Mickey Mouse has a ton of freaking money. Um, what was I going to say? I kind of hope that they follow one of the storylines from the book. It would be cool to see like Mace Windu. Or Red Admiral Thrawn. <laughs> one of the epics in there would be really cool, but then if they keep with the kind of style that they have going right now, with the people that they have going right now just in the future, that would also be great. I personally think that the whole, the whole thing needs to be just kind of killed. Okay, this. This, I meant to bring this onto the stream. I, I actually meant to talk about the whole Disney Star Wars thing, even though it wasn't on our agenda today. Here's my take on it, and this is going to be really short. Whatever he talked about, you don't even need to think about that anymore because this is it. Could it be any worse than this? What? Could anything Disney does be any worse than this? Q-E-D. Okay, next topic. The reason why NVIDIA isn't working too hard on their takers, they're working on super micro... Pro okay, fair enough, probably. Who knows? Uh, new Nexus 4. I'm not much of a phone guy. Have you heard much about it? Yeah, uh, I've heard really good things. It's by LG. As I'm hoping this is all right. You know what's uh, really funny? Is the way that the meaning of LG has changed. <laughs> Their entire company is called LG. It's so, by Life's Good. <laughs> I think you mean Lucky Gold Star. Lucky Gold Star, yeah. That's yeah, what they yeah. used to be called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not Little Girl. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just... Just... just Put it out there. Everything about LG is great. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I've heard really good things. I had a Nexus before. I had the Nexus S. Absolutely love that phone. Uh, the thing that I really like about Nexus phones, and like I know I have an S3 right now, but I'm going to talk up the Nexus a lot more than I talk up an S3, is Nexus phones are very Google branded. Even though it's running Android, Nexus phones are way more Google branded. It says Google on the back. If you notice, S3 is just, you can't really see that that well, but they just say Samsung. All the Nexus phones say Google, so Google really cares about the software on there, and every single time that a new OS would come out with my Nexus S, I would get it the next day. Right. My uh, Nexus S was running Jelly Bean. Um, then when that died and I went to go this get this one, the reason why I was able to get one of these was because I argued saying that with my service plan, I should get a Jelly Bean device instead of the... Um, I don't even remember. They wanted what. to give you an S2, I think. An S2, which was running an older OS. Right. So I argued that a, a competent product would have the same or better OS than Comparable. Mine. Comparable yeah. product would have the same or better he's device He's really than smart. Mine. That's why That's why, That's why. why we work together. But just <laughs> he's never done this thing before. Don't worry, guys. No, no. So, yeah. Um, Nexus phones are great. They have great support. It's going to be ridiculously fast. Okay. What about Samsung's value-added applications? They're good. You use Death Note today. Yeah, but I could also use Evernote. Okay. I mean, honestly, I'm just playing devil's advocate right now because I have the same belief. I mean, you know what I think of how my Galaxy Vibrant yeah. still is running uh, Gingerbread, yeah. whereas a Nexus-branded phone released around the same time would have the latest OS. Every single time, latest OS. It's yep. just way better support. I, I do have to... Sorry, keep going. No, um, okay, my Galaxy Tab 10.1 got ice cream sandwich like a month and a half ago officially yeah. yes i know i could root the device yes i know i could upgrade it unofficially you know what the camera didn't work with the uh, with the unofficial upgrade on the tab 10.1 why should i have a half functional device i've got a buddy at school that's crazy into messing around with his phones hacking his phones doing all that kind of stuff and he always finds one little thing that doesn't work and everything on nexus is will always work <laughs> i never had a single problem with that phone that phone was amazing um i was gonna say something but i don't remember oh well okay 
We can do more Twitter. Okay, I heard there's something something. Our <clears throat> being hipsters, look at this other one, okay, next to four. Um, oh, right. We have very exciting news, you guys. Now that we've got a pretty full, uh, full live stream, I want to let you guys know. So, yours truly, the professional unboxer, will be attending CES this year. And I will be accompanied by none other than SlickPC <laughs> on Twitter. Or just Slick, whichever you prefer. We are going to be trying to do, and guys, bear with us here. So, okay, okay. Linus Tech Tips domain, if you guys go there right now, it kind of sucks. It's like a WordPress blog that's just, it automatically publishes um, whatever I upload to YouTube. Nothing special, nothing you can do just by following me on Facebook or following me on Twitter. Um, or subscribing on YouTube, which is fine too. Um, we're going to revamp that. We're going to install the latest V Bulletin, which is not only a forum, but is also a content management system. So we can do like articles and stuff. Um, we are going to attempt... <clears throat> okay, here, CES. The biggest problem with CES coverage is that it's always lame. It's incomplete, no matter who it is. Minor publication, major publication, they skip 70% of the show, and it gets uploaded like a week later. What this dynamic duo team, potentially with Diesel, wait, we're not sure yet, I haven't talked to him about it actually, mm. but yeah, um, oh. potentially with Diesel, is we're going to attempt to bring you the entire show, which is going to mean at least 25 to 30 videos covering three to five booths each, over the span of the sort of three to four days that it's, I can't remember, it's like three or four days that it's running, and we are going to try to give you guys nightly uploads of everything that we shot that day. So it's going to almost kill us. Yep. It may kill us. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But if you go to the Linus Tech Tips website around the time of CES, mark this in your calendar, guys. Mark this in your calendar. Go there. We're going to have little written articles to go with every video telling you what's, what's in the video, what's up, what's going on. And it is going to be the awesomest thing ever. We're going to be sponsored by Corsair. So Corsair is sending us down there. So you're going to see like a powered by Corsair watermark in the corner. And, uh, and I mean, don't worry, we're going to still cover everything, not Corsair, there are competitors and all that. But uh, guys, I want you, you know what? I rarely ask you to do this, but I want you to, if you're watching on YouTube, I want you to like thumbs up the video. And if you're, I don't know, watching on Twitch, can you like Facebook share a Twitch stream or like, yeah, yeah. I don't know, tell someone about it there. Forget all this newfangled hoo-ha terminology. Just tell someone about this because it's exciting. So thank you for reminding me of that. Slick. What else we got here? I don't, okay, I'm not going to look at your password. Okay. Um, <clears throat> oh, game releases coming up in Q4. Okay. Slick's more of the gamer. So I'm going to see if there's some interesting tweets and uh, he can talk about that. I am ridiculous. Okay. For some people, this is out already. For PC, I'm ridiculously excited for Assassin's Creed 3. That is not out yet on PC. I was deceived by the, the Assassin's Creed 3 trailer. I saw it on Zero Punctuation. It had a song on it that was like, I'm coming home, I'm coming home, tell the world I'm coming home. I downloaded it and it was a rap. <laughs> So I am already not going to buy Assassin's Creed 3 just for Were that. Are you going to at all? I don't, I don't think you own any of the other games. No. Exactly. So well, that I point already, is not valid. <laughs> I was really disappointed. It turned out to be Diddy. <laughs> I have no idea what you No, it was one of those deceptive songs. It was like, um, it was like that Eminem song. Where, yeah, where they mix in a really old school song and then mix yes. it their own. Yes. So yeah. it was like that where I was just like, what the... Okay, so just go talk, about, talk anyway. about your little games. Yeah, Assassin's Creed 3 is going to be epic. I've been staying away from spoilers as much as I possibly can. Many of you have probably already played it if you have consoles, but I'm not a huge console fan. I wait for things on PC. Um, what else is there coming? Black Ops 2 is going to be pretty epic. I think I have one, but I can't remember it. Black Ops 2 is going to be epic? Zombies. <laughs> okay. Nazi Zombies is fun. Nazi Zombies is fun. I'm not actually a huge COD fan, so I don't know. I'm, oh, there's another one. Max Payne is coming. Oh, wait, another one? Not Max Payne, no. Uh, the guy with the barcode on the back of his head. I can't remember the name of that game. I'm pulling a complete blank. Hitman? So good. Yes. Hitman, Hitman Absolution, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. There's quite a few other ones, but I just can't remember off the top of my head right now. But yeah. There's a new expansion for Battlefield 3. Oh, 
can't remember what it's So called. if you bought premium, you get it for no additional money, right? I was going to say free, but... Yeah, but premium... <laughs> I can't even play right now. Punk Buster won't properly install on my system. Really? Yeah, I've been trying to Which fix it for the, like the a while. Which uh, the, uh, the 800D? Yeah. It's really annoying. And like, well, I looked on the forums, there's a whole bunch of people with the same problem as me. And they're just like, yeah, I just play on like non-secure servers. And I'm like, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I tried all the fixes. None of them seemed to work. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Because like, I'm like this, so I can't play any games. So I can't W, A, S, and D. So you I was like, Peggle. <laughs> I don't want to play Peggle. So Science like, versus Zombies. <laughs> Again, I don't know. Diablo really... 3. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I played it for a bit, but I'm just so done with that game. Anyways, um, so I was like, I'll play Battlefield 3 and sit in the base and sit in that little air defensive turret and just <laughs> shoot down flying things all day. So that basically just makes you just a total jackass. <laughs> Pretty much, but that's all I could do. So I was like, whatever, I'll just do that. But I couldn't even play for more than two minutes per server, so it was completely useless. At least you had the the excuse of being like handicapped in order to behave like that. Exactly. Okay. Right? I Fine. I'll, I'll give it to you this time. Um, okay. Storm Gaming has a tweet. My friend has the Mac with the Retina screen. The screen has broken twice. This brings me to one of the topics that I wanted to discuss yeah, tonight, yeah. and that is I tried to do this on a live stream not that long ago, and I kind of failed because it had been a really long week, and I I like brain farted. But I'm going to try and take another crack at this. Okay. Here's what I'm trying to figure out. Why can't I have a 4K desktop display? Or laptop, realistically. Or a laptop, even. Yeah. Why can't I have that? Or, like, anything else. Or anything else. And someone really with a huge name that will back us up is Linus Torvalds. Yeah. Well, no, he didn't say it's. He didn't say it was... Well, no, he did say it was possible. And yeah. It's just ridiculous. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here, 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 here. <clears throat> Think about it this way, guys. Okay, so 4K, what are the challenges? For a long time, it was pixel density. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How old is this device? Three years now? Two and a half years? Around there, yeah. Okay, iPhone 4. Is nice. this, pixel, this pixel density is enough to build a 27-inch 4K monitor, am I right? Right. Okay. So... Um, yeah, that's not a problem anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry? That's not a problem That's anymore. not a problem. I mean, you even look at iPad 3 replacement screens are like 80 bucks. Yeah. So, times four, why can't I buy a $250 or, you know, more? You know, let's, let's say $350, $400. I don't care. I just want one. Like... 27-inch monitor. Why can't I do that? 30-inch monitor. You know, um... People have proven, I'm holding an S3, we've got iPhone 5s all over the place, even though they have, like, almost no improvement. Anyways, people have proven... It's longer. ...that people... <laughs> It's more than you can say. <laughs> oh, I don't. Um, anyways, uh, people have proven that they will spend money on devices even if they make no sense. So what do you mean make no sense? <laughs> I would argue that something like a MacBook Retina makes a lot of sense. No, I would buy I'm that saying, over any other notebook. I was, high res think, I was just taking a crack at iPhone 5. I would buy a higher res screen. Why don't we have higher res screens that are optional to buy? People will buy it. People cared so much about the Retina display and it's not even that impressive. Like, it's awesome, and it, it was beats way better things. than everything else. I agree, but, but it could be so much better. It could be better. Okay, okay, so the argument there might be um, bigger stuff costs more. And I would so like to, more. I would like to direct your attention to this. When is the last time you went to your local big box retailer and checked out the prices of TVs? How much do they cost? Like nothing compared to before. Right? Okay. People bought big TVs before. So a 55-inch TV, you can get for as little as, I think, around 600 700 800 bucks. So if that costs $800, and yes, the pixel density is lower, but I still don't think the pixel density of, of you know, a 30-inch version of that should be, a, you know, an, an engineering or manufacturing nightmare. So this is only $800. The density we need is like 80 bucks, 90 bucks. Why isn't there something in the middle that marries these two things? It just doesn't seem that complicated. It and, really, it shouldn't be that hard. It just should not be that hard. I mean, okay, here, a couple things. Yields. So it comes down to the same thing we were talking about with die size for chips before. Yep. You have to have a yield of a panel. So if you go, okay, like they build, they build LCDs in, in large, large, large panels. They cut them up. Essentially, like they cut them up. Okay, so if you're going to manufacture retina displays, you're going to manufacture a big old thing like this, and you're going to go, okay, here's all the places with defects that we can't use, and you cut around them, essentially. So, okay, 
if you build a bigger high density panel, you're going to lose some. Yep. But then you build it into the price. Exactly. Okay. You always build that into price. That's part of business. And then the other thing is the demand. The demand for these high density panels is extremely high. You look at something like Nexus 10, um, where, what, what is it? What are they, 1920 by 12? No, is it 2560? I think, so. I think it's I think 2560 by 1600, yeah. which is ridiculous. And honestly, Tiger 3 is not fast enough for that. I'm, I'm really no. excited for like a Nexus 10.2 or something. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but okay, okay, so there's demand. But there's, then just charge more for it. Tablets don't even cost that much. You could just take like the screen and charge, you know, quadruple what you would have charged yeah. for that screen yeah. on the tablet. And they... It, I mean, if I'm Samsung, if I'm LG, if I'm one of these guys that's actually manufacturing this stuff, why can't Samsung release a 4K desktop monitor? Why are we getting stuff like this? Beautiful monitor, by the way. 1080p. Why? And like, I remember watching a video quite a while ago on YouTube of them, like this was quite a while ago, of them showing off this 4K TV. And it was, oh, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, 4K technology, they have one. You can't buy it, it's super exclusive, but they have one. So why can't we buy it? Well, we can. Sony has a $25,000. I know, <laughs> but like, it should be so much more available and not $25,000. And that's the thing, is there, what's the manufacturing problem with, with building these large format displays with higher, higher resolution? I don't understand. Um, so that was, that was another topic. So, yes. Ugh. Linus, me, is totally in agreement with Linus Torvalds, the other guy, you know, the Linux guy. He did something once for technology, I think. <laughs> He's got what, a huge... No, what I do is way more important than him. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm unboxing the H100i. <laughs> what are you doing with your life? I'm not saying I'm as good as Linus Torvalds. Anyway. <laughs> um, but where, where was I going? With? Right, so we should have higher resolution displays. Personally, okay, uh, okay, yeah, we'll be locked into DisplayPort, I guess, in order to make sure that... Because HDMI is like... Oh yeah, 4K support at 24 FPS. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, so yeah, we'll have to use DisplayPort, so we need to make sure we have the interconnects that can work, but come on! I mean, even that, it's like DVI. Dual Link DVI has been around for how long? How complicated is the chip on either end? Double it! Yeah. Quadruple it! Okay. 10X it, does it matter? Will you pay an extra $2 for a graphics card if you yes. know it can drive a 4K or an 8K display? Yes. Right? I mean, DisplayPort is even capable of the bandwidth that we need already, so... This is jumping back to a topic we were talking about earlier with uh, PC games not being hard enough to run. I run my 480 and have no problems with anything. I crush everything that comes in my way. Make me want to upgrade my graphics card. Yeah, I know. Well, like, Crisis, there's a 3, lot of... Crisis 3, Star Citizen. And I hope they do. I hope so, too. But like, we don't know yet. Come on, what's up with WoW? They keep, just does they, not care. They keep upgrading their engine. They're like, yay, we have a DirectX 11. Yay. <laughs> it is, well, Tessellation. Okay. This, this brings along another topic about Blizzard just being terrible lately. <laughs> well, like, you can't call it. Like, come on, Diablo 3? Was it looked like it was eight sham. years old. Yeah, yeah. And then, okay, like Diablo 3 is like uh, I just kind of a failure of a release, in my opinion. Like, okay. It's a good game, but it's a Blizzard game. It should be a ridiculously good game. It shouldn't be a pretty they good game. They only release like one game every three years. Exactly. They should have crushed Torchlight. And oh, I know, right? Torchlight, Torchlight was just, good. Torchlight was awesome. I never played Torchlight 2 yet, though. Is it I've good? heard it's better. I haven't played it either, okay. but I've heard it's better. And, like, they did not crush Torchlight. They didn't come close to crushing Torchlight, and they should have. WoW was amazing when it was released. And some people would argue that it's still good. We've got DirectX 11 now. Old. Who cares? It's old. And all the expansions are just like, okay, we added some content. We added one race. It's like, well, okay, that's cool. But your game is really freaking old. They just haven't. And like StarCraft 2, the next expansion, they just pushed it back because they're like, oh, people realize that we did nothing with it and said it was going to be released this year. And we did nothing. We pulled a whole bunch of units out of the game. We added a few and we're like, good luck. Like the, um, what was the original one? The original StarCraft 1 expansion, I can't remember the name, Brood War. Brood War was huge. Brood War changed yeah. everything. And it, it changed was... the entire balance. Totally yeah. different game. And it was amazing, and everyone loved it, and it was great, and it pushed esports, and it was awesome. And Heart of the Swarm just isn't. League of Legends is dominating esports right now. Uh, Counter Strike is like surviving somehow. Um, I love Counter Strike, but it's really old. Um, and like, there's so many things. Uh, Destiny, a StarCraft player, I know you don't know, don't worry. Um, Destiny posted something on Reddit that was really long 
about everything that Blizzard should be doing and just isn't. Blizzard reacted slightly, and so they're going to change a few of the things, but they're just not. And well, know. they added like higher levels of direct X. <laughs> <laughs> but like, come like... on, like people keep asking me. They're like, oh, I um, you know, I want to play. Uh, you know, I want. I'm upgrading my graphics card so I can have DirectX 11, and they'll have like they'll have something good. Like they'll have like uh, you know, like an older DirectX nine. They'll have like a 7900 GTX or something. And then they'll be upgrading, or like they'll have an 8800 GT or something like that, and they'll be upgrading to like a low-end DirectX 11 card. I'm just like, you know what? DirectX level is not that important. <laughs> I mean, look at games like Witcher 2. Yep. DX9! Yep. It's a DX9 game! It looks better than almost anything else for the PC. Especially with their Uber textures. Especially with their Uber textures. And, and honestly, I mean, okay, I challenge you guys. All the gamers watching this stream right now, and we're on Twitch TV, so at least a handful of you better play video <laughs> games, uh, even though I don't. But half of us play video games. Yeah, yeah. He plays video games. Yeah. Um, ch riddle me, okay, I, I challenge you. Go find a game that has DirectX 9, 10, and 11 support. And do a blind taste test with yourself. Get someone to change them around on you and see if you can even tell. It's hard. And like, play the game, though. You don't get to, like, walk around like this and look at the textures on the floor. You don't get to do that. That's cheating. Yeah, like, like, like I said, it's hard. You'd have to do stuff like that to really notice the difference. Okay, so that brought us... Ah, iPhones are made of more environmentally... Hot. Did you know that right now there is not an efficient recycling technique for touchscreens? I actually did not know that. But efficient recycling technique, the Sweden thing. Anyways... Um, okay, but Not for really touchscreens, yeah. there's no there's no environmentally safe disposal method for them. The problem Why? Why? is the bonding layer in between the touch interface and the panel. What is it made of? Uh, I don't remember, but it means you can't separate them anymore. Mm. And uh, apparently, this is like a huge problem. And as more and more touch, I mean, well, so many phones exist. Yes. like so many phones. But now multiply that times whatever for a tablet times whatever for a notebook, times whatever for a desktop monitor. Because everyone's doing it for Windows 8. Uh, All-in-one computers. Um, older, older style touchscreens, it wasn't a problem. Pressure sensitive ones, like for POS terminals. Yeah. But it's a really, I mean, I'm not really going anywhere with this, but it's just a really interesting thing to think about. I mean, on the other hand, when I was a kid, Tetra Packs were a big problem yeah. because there was no way to recycle them. Whereas now, every Tetra Pak is recyclable. Because I'm sure they'll come up with something. Some guy won some award for coming up with a way. I hope they come up with something, but it's just something to think about right now, guys. So don't buy, you know, more touchscreens than you absolutely need, if you don't absolutely need to. Science will find a way. On the other hand, I do work at NCIX, so buy lots of new technology gear um, and stuff. Okay, don't like the S3. It's plasticky. See? Ha! Ah! It is plasticky. Storm That's Gaming right. is with me. And I'm not a huge fan of that either. I don't like the back. I wish it had a textured back like my old Nexus S did. I'll admit when things are on. Oh, hey, I wanted to ask you guys, um, how's the audio levels tonight? Because I've had complaints in the past from people watching on mobile device, mo mobile, mobile, mobile devices or anything like that. They were saying they couldn't turn the audio levels up enough, so I hope it's, uh, I hope it's good enough tonight. Let's check the, uh, the Twitch chat. Um, audio is good. Crap. Good. Clear and crisp, perfect, extremely good, better. Okay, awesome. Glad to hear it. Thank you, Twitch, for letting me know. And uh, we've got a correction. Elric was fired. Yes, we know. Yeah. I think we said he was gone. I don't think I, we said yeah. he left. I don't know. I, I, I was saying he left, but I was talking about Tiny John Logan. Oh, okay. He might have... I don't know if I might have said the same thing or he heard the wrong thing or whatever. Are you wearing a Team Liquid hoodie? Yes. Oh. You're so lame. <laughs> Esports isn't sports. And then... Right and there. I know I'm on Twitch TV right now saying that. It's not going to make me popular, but it's not sports. You know what? It comes... it's, it's, but they, they preface it with something. Okay, here, they know they're here, not look. like all the rest of sports. Okay. At least they're not poker, which tries to call itself a sport. <laughs> okay, fine. That's a lot worse. They know they're esports. I don't know. Uh, okay, hold on. I have to log into this. So you can talk more about how esports is a sport. I'm not, though. I'm saying it's an esport. It's its own little category. They don't try and say, like, oh, we're runners and high jumpers and football players they know they're esports they have their own category i like that they're not like poker i hate poker poker's like oh yeah it's a sport we sit around the table and look at each other it's fun yeah know. but they look at each other really intently intently yeah <laughs> no i know and like and poker is difficult and you can make money yeah poker is difficult you can make money you can it's make a challenge money. you can make more money playing poker than you can 
doing almost any other sport other than like you know NBA. Uh, and but, well, not that NHL players are making any money right now, but but they should differentiate themselves in some way because it is different. So it's a mind sport, or it's a table. They sport. They should just call themselves a table sport. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, well, Magic tries to say they're come sport on, too. That, that's like calling Dungeons and Dragons a sport, though. It's a table game. Poker is a game, <laughs> and esports are games. But whoa, uh, that was actually impenetrable. Go ahead. <laughs> so it. then it's a sport because they're all games. How is that a sport because they're games? Football's a game. Football... So you just categorized all of them. You just <laughs> beat yourself. <laughs> That's impenetrable. <laughs> I'm covering you. There's nothing you can do about it. I hate you. <laughs> Apparently, Christian... Thi oh, no. Eclipse thinks you're the handsomest man on the interwebs. Thanks, Eclipse. I would argue that I can find someone more handsome than Slick on the internet. Oh god. Stay away from your website. <laughs> okay, this is kind of scary. <laughs> I'm just Don't do this. Handsome man. <laughs> do you have the right search settings? Here we go, here, okay, we go, here right. we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Please don't have the wrong right search settings. Alright, right there. Handsomer than Slick. I don't have a shaver. I can't compete with him. <laughs> you don't have a shaver? Well, maybe that's why you look no, so <laughs> scruffy and horrible, like some kind of homeless person. That's for Movember. Okay, let's talk for Movember. Movember is about a mustache. You just look like a scrub. <laughs> All right, let's find, let's find other men that are more handsome than Slick. You know what? I'm surprised there aren't more troll pictures here of, like, not handsome men at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm really surprised. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> I'm just happy Justin Bieber didn't come up. There we go. Oh. This is more along. This is more your speed. <laughs> I disagree. I would I would make that argument that that is that is more that is more your speed. And we are going to go back to Twitter where they are going to all hardcore agree with me. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that they are. Can we Google small people? I'm pretty sure that we can't Google small people <laughs> because I'm not going to talk to you about that. <laughs> All right. We're back to Twitter. Oh, go to that top guy. Top guy. All right. We have a question on Twitter from Vag. <laughs> Veg? Let's call him Veg. Let's go with Veg. Let's okay. go with Veg. Um, Veg93 says, How come mechanical keyboards are so expensive? Do you think it's a matter of time before prices become more reasonable? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I would say not ever, not at all. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think they'll ever be cheaper. Uh, mechanical keyboards don't really break down, so you don't have the ability to just buy more all the time, like with uh, membrane keyboards where they'll just die. Okay, look at it this way. Do cars get cheaper as a category? No, not really. Why? Well, prices okay. always go up. Yes, out. steel costs more than it did last but year. But I think he's asking in relation to membrane keyboards. No. But, but okay, hold on, because, well, no, I think he just says they're so expensive. Do you think it's a matter of time before they come down? So steel costs more, glass costs more, everything costs more. Electronics customers are so spoiled yeah. because this is the only product in the world it actually goes down. where advancing the technology inherently makes it cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like a car, you, you want to like machine more valves into an engine. Like it costs, it costs more. more. Yeah. Uh, mechanical keyboard. A mechanical keyboard, there's nothing digital about it. It costs what it costs to build those key switches. Well, okay, I didn't say, no, I don't mean there's nothing digital about That's it. That's what you said. <laughs> well, I'm talking about a mechanical key switch. Okay. Um, so mechanical key switch, there's, okay, I can't believe he's doing this. Okay, you guys have to see this. He's climbing in my blinds. Rocket, hey, get down. You brat. Okay, I got it. So Rocket is joining our live stream, which he doesn't usually do. No. Um, right. I think so it's a little. There you go. There we go. So mechanical keyboards inherently cost money. They are digital, yes, but like not the switch. Um, and there's nothing that can make them come down in price because there's nothing to miniaturize. Yeah, and it costs more to make them. Yeah. Well, I guess he didn't. I guess he wasn't saying in relation. So yeah, no. Yeah, now, it costs more than more than membranes. It won't come down. And with more people likely going the way Logitech did with their G710 Plus, there's all the features added in. I mean, the only reason membrane keyboards came about at all was because of the way that in electronics inherently get cheaper. As the computer got cheaper, it became less and less justifiable 
to include a keyboard that costs a hundred dollars to manufacture. Yeah. If you're selling a keyboard or a computer, that's a thousand dollars total, as opposed to five thousand dollars total. Wasn't viable for IBM to make their yeah. Model M's anymore. I mean, just the same way that video cards, you know, um, six seven years ago, we're talking, you know, ninety eight hundreds and stuff like that, used to come with a bunch of games and like a bunch of accessories and like all this stuff, um, and now they don't because inherently they were like okay okay actually graphics cards are a great example because as the chips get more efficient and they keep, they've kept increasing the die sizes over the years so they're not getting cheaper in the same way electronics usually do but there's a lot of stuff that costs more on a graphics card no matter what like power delivery coolers are made of copper and aluminum yeah which are always increasing in price so um so that's that's where that that squeeze comes from you can't include as many value add peripherals if the thing is going to always cost more. And that's why if you buy like a prepackaged crap t computer, like an yeah. HP, you're going to get the worst keyboard and the worst mouse because they're just going to be as cheap as they possibly can so that they can give you functionality. And they know that no one's going to use it anyway. Yeah. You know what it comes down to is nothing is free. Yeah, no such thing as a free lunch. There's no such thing as, no, nothing is free. If you buy, you know, if you buy a car that includes the undercoating, that means they built it in somewhere else. Yep. Um, if you buy a computer that includes a fantastic mechanical keyboard, you paid for that somewhere. You paid for it somewhere. So you know what? If anything, I have no problem with stuff just coming with less and ultimately me being able to just buy what I actually want as opposed to yeah. bundling things I don't need. That's like uh, the Neo Eco uh, power supplies from Antec. Right. Like I have bags of generic power cables. I don't need it to come with a power cable. On the other hand, there. speaking as the person who was the buyer for those when they came out, they actually didn't drop the costs at all for me. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> never mind then. <laughs> I actually didn't even get like a ten cent saving so okay. on the on the product itself. I assumed I, they were discounted. I don't know. However, I think the packaging actually ended up costing them more because it moved to a cardboard packaging. As right, but they could have done that with any power supply. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, no, but I'm saying the money that okay, I didn't get a discount on it. Right. Because they saved money on a cable and spent more on an eco friendly on an packaging. Eco friendly packaging. But like if they did that, so with, it's okay all their power supplies, right? it would make more sense. And then you should get a discount. But then it. there's that one customer who comes ripping into your store about how you sold them a computer that didn't work and didn't come with everything it needed. So, you know, from the retailer side of things. But that's yeah. how printers have been forever. Printers never really came And you know how many cables. customers are angry about that on yeah, a daily a basis? A Even point. now, I mean, you worked at Best Buy. <laughs> Sadly, yes. How many customers <laughs> came in None ripping you a new one? I told them all. Okay, but... <laughs> Were you ever covering for someone? Uh, yeah, it did happen. I will admit it did happen. Yeah. yeah. Or if people just come in and grab a printer and they don't check the box, they wouldn't know. Um, do an arm wrestle with Slick. Do this Slick. Uh, do the stream with Slick more often. It's much more enjoyable. You know what? You guys, you guys are not loyal at all. <laughs> You guys suck. Actually, no. I appreciate every one of you tuning into the live stream. I know the timing is super not ideal. Thanks to everyone who's over in Europe and tuning in in the morning, and uh, everyone who's in sort of Eastern Canada, United States, tuning in super late at night. Thank you guys for joining us. I'm not sure if Slick will be a regular member of the live stream, and for now, we are going to put him back under wraps. Thank you for watching the live stream tonight, and good night, and I'll see you guys again. Uh, should be next Friday. Remember, you can always check twitch.tv slash Linus Tech to see when the next live stream is going to be. And if you're not already following me on Twitter, and following Slick on Twitter as well, actually, you can send him your tech questions and stuff. Uh, if you're not already following us on Twitter, then make sure you're following on Twitter, and you'll see notifications about upcoming live streams as well. Good night, everyone. Good night, guys. You're not allowed to talk. You got the bag on your head. That's right. Good slick. Good. Oh, I hit the wrong button. I didn't stop the live stream. <laughs> Hold on, I'm stopping it now. <laughs>